Do you want to know what it takes to catch more fish on the line every time you cast? So I'm Ben Strock. I'm here with this rock star, Bjorn Berg. This guy is one of the top agents in our entire county, and he has really identified that he can catch more fish with a tightly woven net than he will ever just going completely wide and missing the opportunities that are right in front of him. Bjorn, can you kind of give me your assessment of what you're doing that's identifying key buying signals and things to that degree that are, it's always blowing up, and uh, show them kind of what you're doing in process? Yes, yeah, so it's a lot like dating, right? So you're single, you're on the dating apps, you're swiping, right? And you're trying to get engagement. And you know, if you're reaching out to someone that's not interested in you, then you shouldn't be bugging them, right? And if, if people are engaging with you, you know, you really want to be working with people that like you and that, you know, want to be out, hanging out with you, looking at houses. And so, yeah, it's really just about engagement and finding people that you like and want to work with. And so it, that's a really good analogy. And it's something that I've kind of used over a long period of time as well when I think about dating versus, you know, dating your realtor. And now when you're talking about what kind of signals, when somebody sends you a message, is it, hey, look, I want to see houses today, and that then keys you in as to that person's really real, and then kind of where does it go? What kind of things do you do for a buyer to keep them engaged and on the hook? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we set people up on drip campaigns, and so they're getting, you know, emails, and they're getting property alerts, and. A lot of these people are not quite ready to buy yet, and then sometimes they'll surface and they'll get an email and you know, they'll respond and say, hey, I want to check out this house, and then that's a signal that you should really be focusing on that person, they're ready to go, and so you're teeing up that appointment and you're going out with them, and you know, so a lot of times people just kind of surface out of nowhere that you haven't really even been communicating with. Um, frequently. So once you've shown them one home and you've, you've kind of met them and you've you got a good feel for what they're looking for, what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis to maybe keep them engaged and make sure that they're, you know, finding the right things that they want? Yeah, so every day I look at the new listings that come on the market and then I text links to my buyers that could be a good fit for them and I set up a lot of showings that way and then I also tip them off about listings that are not on the market yet. And so I dig, I look at the coming soons on the MLS and then the coming soons within our office and you know even potential listings that are kind of like make me move sellers that aren't gonna come on the market but they would sell for the right price. And so just giving them a heads up on opportunities that they don't necessarily know are out there. And then I'm assuming you're going and previewing homes and you're... Yeah, you know, taking video, videos. Taking video, yeah, I mean, video right now. If you guys aren't using video and sending videos out to your clients, you're really missing an opportunity there. Um, it, what better than, hey, look, John, I found this amazing home and you're talking to me about a backyard. Look at this backyard. I mean, that is way more powerful than almost anything else you can be doing for a child and a buyer. Uh, once you kind of have these guys engaged and you get them in a point where they're finding homes that they like, what are you guys actually doing to move forward in that transaction and, and get it close? I mean, it's a competitive market out there. And are, do you have any tips and tricks that you're getting people one up? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really about building trust with the client and it's a crazy market out there. And so sometimes, you know, if you just met someone, they really don't want to believe you that this home's about to go two, 300,000 over asking. It's kind of mind blowing if you're not, you know, living and breathing in the real estate market. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if you spend time with them and you build rapport and, you know, you get to know them, then it definitely helps build that trust. And then when it comes time to write an offer, they'll listen to you and they'll do, you know, whatever it takes to win that house. And sometimes they don't get the first home that they write an offer on, and sometimes that's a learning lesson for them. And oftentimes, you know, if you advise them properly and they don't listen to you the first time, then they will the next time. 
Yeah, and sometimes I describe it as a three-part process. Unfortunately, if you're a home buyer out there, you know, an agent like Bjorn who's out there every day, sees every single property that's out there on the market, constantly showing homes, knows the market really well, advises you the first time you don't want to have that trust. Again, two, three hundred, five hundred thousand over asking seems insane. And he tells you that, you're gonna go, yeah, no, we'll just do it at my way. Then that second time, you're often starting to listen to him because you really are building that trust. And then that third time, it might take to really get in the door. Um, I've seen you countless times write one offer and end up with a home. So I have to give you credit on that. And you know, really impressed as to how you're building out your business. So what I've been most impressed with and what I see out there is that not every agent has the same knowledge. If you're new in the business and think that just these three courses in real estate are gonna get you to the finish line, the rude awakening is it takes a lot more than that. And what I've noticed with Bjorn is he's been dedicated to learning and the things that he's learned have translated into his business continuing to grow. So don't ever stop learning. What are some of the main things you think somebody who is getting into the business or maybe looking for more business really can do to gain trust with the clients in terms of education? So you need to be the market expert first and foremost. And you need to be out there on broker store, you know, previewing all the new listings. You need to know the inventory. You need to track what they're being listed for and what they're selling for. And, and you need to know the micro markets within your county because there's you know, homes that are ocean front, the list price, sales price, you know, the activity is a lot different than the homes that are out in Santa Cruz Mountains. Within, you know, our county is very diverse. And so you need to know all the micro markets within your area. Second, I would say construction knowledge is huge. You know, being able to walk through a house and knowing all the terms and being able to point things out and just being very comfortable with home inspections and so that you can read through them and, and that you're able to, you know, advise your clients as to what's really going on. And, you know, a lot of times those things can be pretty scary for first time buyers, but you know, it's, that's their job as home inspectors. They always find a bunch of stuff on there. And so you kind of have to dissect what's really going on. Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? And, and then, yeah, I mean, just making yourself available is huge as well because it, Buyers, you know, it, the way our world is these days, everybody wants everything on demand. And so if they want to see a house, they want to see it now, you know, and you need to make yourself available. If you, if you don't, then you're going to miss opportunities. So it's kind of a funny thing. When you get into real estate, you go, oh, hey, I want my flip. My flexible schedule seems like this dream job. Yeah. And you know, as you further get into the business, you realize, oh hey, I have to be flexible. But when you start really learning the business, you understand that you have to set boundaries on your own flexibility. And it's like if you go into the doctor and the doctor was available every single time you went there, you know, would you think that doctor was a very good doctor? Probably not. So you have to be flexible, but within your own schedule to allow for a little bit of free time still happening. And then also Bjorn just mentioned that this advisory role. And I think that agents oftentimes get looked at as door openers. And if you are a door opener in the industry, that's not gonna really serve you long term and you're not gonna pick up a really large client sphere. And so what it really takes is what he said. It's a lot more of an understanding of neighborhoods. It's an understanding of construction. It's an understanding of the mortgage business. It's an understanding of the appraisal business. It's an understanding of negotiation and tactics in order to help you know, make sure that you get that success. So you know, it's really cool to watch it. you grow as an agent and as a human and keep, keep crushing because your future is very bright. If any of you guys want to talk, further about real estate, call Bjornberg, he'll be happy to share further. I'm always happy to share as well, and uh, look forward to seeing you around town. You did hit a couple of good points there. Uh, these clients really lean on us for every aspect of the business, not just showing homes and negotiating deals, but it's, you know, 
legal knowledge, it's accounting, it's psychology, it's marketing. I mean, we're not any of those things. We're not attorneys, yeah, you are. we're not accountants, but we really are. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super crazy. Yeah. I mean, think about that and like, oh, the number of calls I've had in the middle of the night, basically just being some of these therapists, it's insane. Yeah. So I guess I'm a therapist. You a, you a captain? Yeah, they're conscious numbers. Maybe. Well, they got the mortgage payment for sure. <laughs> <laughs>